Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Covered and today we're going to be talking about the Podium Advanced Paddle Module from Fanatec. So this is a premium modification for one of the Podium Hub, the F1 2018-2019 racing wheels, the Formula V2 and the Club Sport Wheel Universal Hub. <clears throat> you can see it here, fitted to my Formula V2 wheel. I'll show you how I managed to fit that, any obstacles I may have faced, and then we'll just go through what I think about this thing. It's they're pretty solid, so let's let's try it out in a few games. So here we have the original Formula V2 wheel with the stock paddles. I mean, there's a little bit of movement there. You can actually see there's quite a bit of movement with the paddles. These are the screws that we need to undo in order to remove this little plastic panel, which will then give us access to the cables. Then we have two screws. You can see one here on each side. They're Allen key based screws, and they have to be removed in order to remove the shifters themselves. So I guess we should uh, go and have a look at the advanced power paddle module. So this is the lovely box I've just received. Let's open her up. And we have a box within a box, but at least this one's a little prettier. So this is the podium advanced paddle module. It's a little bit of blurb on the back as we can see here which just tells you a little bit about how to fit it and as far as I remember this is the the only thing you have to work out what goes where. So let's uh, get into this box shall we? So inside the box we have this little pamphlet that uh, tells us that we should be installing the latest drivers, otherwise we're going to end up not being able to use the paddle module. I have the beta drivers installed so it wasn't a problem for me, but for some users this has been an issue. And then we're greeted with these lovely paddles. See their carbon fiber, the bottom pieces have little gold fleck in them, they look really really cool. Um, so let's get them out, start assembling. I'm just going to take the left hand shifter here out, and this is the right hand shifter really because it's, it's presented upside down. You see that there's quite a lot of wiring exposed but it's not a big deal I don't think. I don't know if you can see how stiff these things are but they're, they're pretty hard to activate at least without the um, paddles attached. They're not being on a wheel. We have a couple of tools that are provided. Uh, we have I think it's two Allen keys provided of different sizes. One of them is the size for the screws on the, the wheel, like the formula wheel, and the other is to access the, the screws and undo them for the, the paddle itself. So I mistakenly actually take out the wrong piece here because I have a Formula 2 wheel, and as the Formula 2 uh, V2 wheel is using the smaller pieces, I promptly kind of put it back in the box. I wanted to check how it assembles against the paddle before I start actually doing the work. So I grab out both sets of the inner paddles. So the, the inner paddles in the box, they're for small wheels like the V2, and then the outer ones are for the uh, larger wheels that you might be wanting to use it. I think it would be nice if the if Fanatec gave you the option to buy them separately 
so you can reduce the cost of the initial purchase so when you purchase this you only purchase say the small paddles or the large paddles and not have to effectively buy both but only be able to use one i found the the box very fiddly to get these tools out i ended up using one of the allen keys to extract the other allen key it's really quite fiddly but the, the whole process actually is pretty fiddly as you see later on we have this little bag of screws and this allows us to do us do some assembly work so we, we actually have to assemble the paddles onto the module itself we have a set of those and they're, they're, they're quite small and of course being small and right next to very powerful magnets it's a bit of a recipe for a disaster and I, I did on more than one occasion end up having the screws suck themselves to the, the module you can see right there this happened to me here and also when i'm attaching the paddle to the, the steering wheel and that happens so many times it's really not a joke i don't think there's anything that fanatec could do about that um this is just more an inconvenience of how the product is it's a, it's a magnetic product and the screws are um you know ferrous metal so they're, they're just going to be sucked in so i've just sped this section up because you don't really want to spend an hour watching me screw products together just to give you an idea of how uh, cumbersome some of these parts are and how even I can assemble them eventually. So with all the screws done up, you can see we can now slightly easier um, access the paddles. They, they feel pretty good. So they're not going to feel perfect because they're in my hand. But with that done, we get a nice cushion. I do advise using a cushion here to put your wheel on. But you're going to be putting it face down at some point. And then we start unscrewing the screws on the face of the wheel to, as I said earlier, access that little plastic panel. This isn't so bad. So I'll just quickly speed this up. And then we've got this panel at the back. And the panel then gives you these cables that you have to detach. And they are what currently the, the standard paddles use for communication. The larger sockets you see there, the two larger ones on each side, they're actually for the um, advanced pad paddle module, so we're, we'll be using those. Now we have the joyous task of trying to actually remove the paddles. Um, it's not so bad here, the, the screws fairly easy to get to with the ones at the back, but the ones at the, the bottom of the wheel, uh, they, they're a little harder to get to. And I would actually advise removing the paddle plates first before you do this, because I did end up damaging the um, the paddle plates. So they're only, I think, aluminium and very easy to damage. And I did, which could affect your retail value if you wanted to, say, resell this on and um, use the paddle module on something else. If you're reselling your wheel, having the um, original shifters damaged would be a problem. So hooking out the, the cable from the original um, paddle isn't so bad. I mean, it does get caught on a few bits, so I just use the Allen key here to fish it out, make sure it didn't snag. And then I take the advanced module and then push that through. The, the cable's a little thicker, but it's harder to work with. So what I actually ended up doing here is grabbing some uh, tweezers and using that to help guide the, the cable through. If you don't have tweezers, then uh, good luck because I have pretty skinny fingers and I still couldn't get those in. So it's a very small space to work. 
But if you've got something you can use, maybe steal your wife's tweezers um, or you know, any tweezers you can find at hand and use those. I'm using electrical ones here because they're slightly longer and a little bit easier to work with. So now I've got out the cable and I can then start thinking about attaching that. Yeah, it's, yeah I kind of have to start fishing around with the, the cabling. Once you've done that, you've got your module roughly in place, and then you can attach the cable. Make sure it's the right way up. Don't want to be bending any pins, and then just attach. It takes a little bit of force, but it's not too bad. And then probably the hardest part is trying to hide away the rest of the cabling so you can actually get the back on. Then we come to screwing the um, paddle module back on. So it sits slightly differently to the original, but if the original one only had a centerpiece, whereas these have you know, three um, available inputs each side, so they are quite a bit larger. So it's a pretty um, fiddly job to do. I had a couple of stabs and Actually, I think originally I put the wrong side on first, then I ended up having to remove it again and uh, put the correct side in. So make sure you've got your orientation right. It's a little tricky to do because obviously you're working from the back of the wheel, and I the wheel upside down, and I didn't realize I had the wheel upside down. You know, excuses and all that, but uh, yeah, I made a mistake there, so I had to spend a bit of time undoing it. Then you can't see very well here, but I am fiddling like crazy trying to get the screw into the hole. It wasn't so easy locating it. Once it comes in, it's, it's not too bad. And you don't have the same problem you have with the uh, original non-metallic uh, magnetic uh, shifters in that they're not in the way. They're not soiling your space for accessing the screws. But on the the other side of things, the, the flip side of the coin, you have the magnets there, and they're always going to cause you some problems. So we've got the first one attached, have a bit of a play of it, make sure it's sitting nicely and tight, and then we do the same thing for the other side. I've sped up a little bit so you don't have to watch me fiddling around for what felt like an eternity. Interestingly, I was I was quite happy with the the stock shifters, but I I wanted to see what um, the the advanced power paddle module would be like. I was pretty impressed with it. I'd used a paddle module uh, on the um, G27. It was just a little mod that fit behind the initial shifters that you get with the the wheel, and that. That was okay, but honestly, the stock shifters on the Fanatec wheel feel better than that. And then the advanced paddle module feels just another level on top of that. It's really good. So now we've got both sides on. We connect the last cable. So I had a couple of stabs at that and trying to get those cables neatly tucked away. So I didn't do a very good job of that. So I had to take it back off and try again. And then once that's in, we can start putting the screws back on the plate. It is a tight squeeze on the um, little plastic panel now, but it's, it's still fairly comfortable. Just have to rejig those cables a little bit. And there we have it. We have a Formula V2 wheel with the Podium Advanced Paddle Module installed. having a little bit of a play with the um, paddles on the back. Quickly show you what those things look like. You can see you've got the shifters on the top and the analogs at the bottom. It looks pretty tidy. It clashes a little bit with the red of the quick release, but it's, it's not a bad.
So how do I feel about the advanced podium um, paddle module after using it for basically a couple of weeks? Well, no, I haven't really had much of an opportunity to use the uh, double clutch. I tried and you can see it here in this uh, just example footage that I created, but I haven't really used that. So that that's kind of lost on me a little bit. I do like the addition to you've got the two magnetically um, released uh, buttons each side and they're, they're pretty useful for not only gear shifting but also for some um, separate use so because I'm mostly playing ACC I use those for indicators rather than for DRS but it's still pretty useful to have. Is it worth the additional money over the magnetic module? That I'm not so sure about, at least not in my particular circumstance where I'm playing a lot of a set of course of competition. If I was playing, I don't know, F1 2020, or if I was playing um, more a set of course, so maybe those other features would be more prominent. And I'm kind of a little bit on the, the fence when it comes to whether those features are worth it. I mean, it's not a huge uplift from the uh, magnetic module. I think the magnetic module is 99 euros and this is 179 euros. So, I mean, for what, 80 euros more, you're getting um, double the number of mag magnetic release buttons and you're also getting the um, the additional uh, analog paddles. So I think they're worth having, just not sure they're worth the addition, you know, the, the additional cost of 80 euros, um, at least from my perspective. As a an enhancement on the initial uh, shifters that you get with the Formula V2. They're quite a big enhancement on that. They have much less throw. I don't know if you could see that in the, uh, the video I produced, but they have a lot less movement in them. So being able to shift, it just feels much more rapid, and precise. I, I do like that. I, I, I would say it's really aided my gameplay much but I, I think it has given me more confidence in my shifting so if you're looking for a more confident shift and you don't use or plan to use the the additional features of the advanced paddle module I would say go for the magnetic module instead because the, the paddle module um, giving you those two analog paddles it's nice is it a must-have I'm not sure anyway I think it's a great product and over the next few months I'm sure I'm going to start getting more benefit from those other features so I still give it a thumbs up just make sure that you are going to be using those features or you plan to use those features in the in the near future if not save yourself 80 euros and go for the magnetic module either way both of those products are great